Dear viewers, it's time to end Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Let's go! Uh, I'm pretty confident we're gonna end it today, actually. I, I, I think we are at that point. This is the final part of the final trial. Final day of trials, anyway. We have who I'm pretty sure is the ultimate villain behind most everything going on here. Damon Gant right here. We are trying to squeeze him for what it's worth. I guess I should mention the shocking reveal last time that apparently the killer of uh, Neil Marshall back in SL9 was actually Emma, who accidentally shoved him into the sword of the suit of armor in Gant's office. and. What's actually going on in this whole business well, is a cover-up, basically. You know, uh, Lana covering up for her sister, basically, you know. Which is really tragic and also a good twist on my expectations. I was expecting some sort of much darker conspiracy where someone else was the killer all along rather than Joe Dark. And it was all set up to have Joe Dark take the blame for this other person's killings. I don't think that's the case anymore. This this whole Emma thing, assuming it's true, is seems to be the real thing. Uh, I think the plot would get way too convoluted if they added that twist at this point in the story. So I think my, my sense is that we are sticking with the horrifying, horrifying twist of Emma being the actual killer. Um, I don't know. Obviously... You know, she was in danger, her life was in terrible danger here, so I, I, I'm a little hesitant to, like, cast, like, a lot of, like, blame on Emma, but it's still a horrible circumstance, and I'm sure it's a nightmare for her. Like, this is, would be a terrible thing to find out that this, this happened, like, you know. So, yeah, but let's focus here. Now, before I start grilling Gant, Remember, everybody, we have to play it very, very carefully today because I already got dinged on this once, got one yellow card last time. We have to follow evidence law, which hasn't come up at all in previous cases, even though it seems rather relevant, but here we are now. Rule number one, no evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. Rule number two, unregistered evidence presented must be relevant to the case on trial. So we have to be careful with what evidence we throw down now, so it meets these two criteria. A little contrived, like I just said, that this has never come up before, but... On one hand, I understand, this is the final case, things need to be extra difficult, so let's add this extra wrench here. Even though it's a little weird narrative-wise that it hasn't come up previously, but sure. Now, I had, I had some idea of what to do here, but we haven't pressed Gant on this latest testimony involving the weird, weird, weird evidence found inside his office. So let's do the presses first and then we will try what I think might be the right answer. So first he's like, you can't prove when these evidence were found. Let's see. What do you mean by that? This is all purely hypothetical, of course. But suppose I did place those items in my safe. Such an act wouldn't necessarily constitute forgery. If concealing evidence found at a crime scene isn't forgery... I'm not through speaking yet, Rido. It all depends on when the evidence was discovered. If they were found after Dark was convicted, then they're worthless. I guess that's a good point. Let's press him on that. Are you saying this jar fragment wasn't discovered in the initial investigation? It would appear not. After all, it wasn't listed in the evidence list. For all we know, it could have suddenly materialized the day after Dark was sentenced. Oh, and wouldn't that be convenient? Right? Huh? The Chief is talking about a possibility. So long as you can't rule that out. Your remarks, however clever they may be, will only succeed in wasting time. Tell me something I don't know. Come now, Rhino! Think about it. 
There's no reason I'd participate in a forgery. Oh yeah? Let's throw down some reasons. How can you look me in the eye and say that? Because I'm innocent. That's a pretty good retort. Yeah. I <laughs> Remember? Who was it that murdered Neil? I'm not sure I care for the word murder here. Yeah, like that was what I was saying at the start of this episode. It was like an awful accident, basically. Murder... Well, you know what? You're right. There is like first degree murder and then there's those other degrees of murder. But all of those other degrees still imply malicious intent to my mind, as far as I understand. Like, there was no intent to do harm to Neil Marshall in this situation, so I, I, yeah. It's tricky. It's super tricky. You'd need an actual lawyer to weigh in on what this constitutes as. Anyway. But in the end, the person responsible for Mr. Marshall's unfortunate demise was Emma Skye. Hmm. Well, now do you see? He's got a point there, of course. It does seem weird to grill him on a crime which we've already pinned on somebody else, but, you know. I think, I think, the, I think the line here is obvious. He's, he's, he's committing, you know, you know, forgery and covering up a mistrial to have dirt on Lana is his motivation. I don't know how we're going to get to that, but I, I think it's pretty clear to me that that's what, uh, why he's gotten his fingers in this whole business. So yeah, rearranging the crime scene wouldn't help me out in any way. Really, Chief Gant? At the very least, there is one very large benefit you've reaped from all this. Oh, I wasn't aware. What is this benefit? And that would of course be the position you have. Chief of Police. Oh. The resolution of the SL-9 incident secured your promotion to Chief. That in itself is sufficient motive. Yeah, I, I guess so. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Huh? Do you really think I'm that incompetent? What do you mean? Even without that case, I was already in line to become the next chief. The resolution of SL9 merely sped up the inevitable a little. Is that true, Edgeworth? Yes. He was going to be made chief anyway. Uh -huh. Be careful when pointing that finger, or you might wind up being the one pointed at. So that means... There's only one possible motivation for you to commit forgery. If you didn't do it for yourself, then you did it for someone else. Don't be silly, Worthy. You know me better than that. There are only three people I look out for. Me, myself, and I. Wow. The truth come out, I guess. His, his jolly facade has been shrinking uh, more and more we meet him, yeah? But of course, like I said, if he's working, he's doing a quote-unquote favor for Lana, he is doing that to further his own ends in controlling the Justice Department. So, yeah, there you go, you know. I this, But again, how do we spin that on him? I don't know. There, it's out in the open now. Aji, uh, would you mind if I changed my testimony a little? By all means, please do. Oh, the testimony was changed. I wouldn't be anyone's accomplice if there was nothing in it for me. Because we got to press him on this. Now I'm thrown for a loop. This is not where I was going to throw down the evidence that I thought was going to work. Hmm. Well, we got to press him on it anyway. Let's see. Nothing in it for you? Sorry, but the only person I care about is yours truly. That girl? Lana's little sister, was it? If you think I felt sorry for her, you'd better think again. You're right. 
You don't feel sorry for anyone. Be tough on crime and tough on people. That's how I was raised. You seem to be lax enough on yourself, though. Ha! 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 Oh, that's a good one, Worthy. Hmm. Could there have been something in it for him? Given his selfishness, would he have helped someone out? Oh gosh, do we point out his accomplice, who I think is Lana? Again, this is maybe what I was just talking about. Go big or go home, y'all, yeah, let's go. This is really not what I thought we were doing. I thought when he... Here's what I thought we were gonna do. Is when he was like, If you can't prove the evidence was, you know... You know, for, you know, for all you know, that evidence was after Joe Dark's conviction. But, you know, we know that the one evidence that Emma made, you know, the, the sketch on the back of the evidence sheet, that was before Joe Dark's conviction. So I thought that we would have to throw that evidence down at that moment. Now it feels like we're straying away from that, so... It's good I didn't do that right away. Had the patience to do these uh, presses, yeah? So let's, let's see if we can get this to work. Let's see if we can get this to work now, this avenue instead. Yeah, now I feel like maybe it would have backfired if I tried to do that, since since this is, seems to be working out so much better now. Well, who knows? Maybe it'll come back in a moment later. We'll see. True. You might not help out anyone for their sake. But if it would benefit you, you might decide to assist someone. Hmm. Mr. Wright. It appears you're positively determined to portray the Chief as a nice man who likes to lend people a hand. <laughs> That's actually really funny, even though it's awful that the judge is standing for Gant this hard. That's not what I mean. Very well, then. Who is this person you believe Chief Gant may have helped forge evidence? Lana, like I've been saying, right? Lana would want Emma being bailed out, and Gant could use Lana for his ends, you know, with all the blackmail he could hold over her. It all makes sense to me. Also, Lana's the only one who benefited from all this, so, you know. You know, also that, you know, no one else actually got out ahead from SL9. So, it stands to reason that the one who got help was the one who benefited. So, Lana, yeah. Chief Prosecutor Lana Sky? Uh, uh, the defendant! Hmm. I believe it's quite obvious in light of the circumstances. Emma Sky fell victim to an unfortunate series of events. Who would want to help her more than her own sister, Lana? And as for Chief Gant, he would also have a reason to help Lana if she asked him to. That reason, of course, is self-profit. Self-profit? What do you mean? After the SL9 incident was resolved, Lana Sky was appointed Chief Prosecutor at the Prosecutor's Office. The person who arranged this job change was you, Chief Gant. Oh, see, that comes back again. Remember, we learned that, you know, discussion previously. It was Gant who... Sorry, taking a drink in the middle here. By the way, if this goes long today, because this might be a long end, don't mind if I have to take a quick break in the middle to get some more water. <laughs> but, you know, it's very likely we're going long today. But, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, like, that's the first time I was like, hmm, that's convenient for Gant that... He was able to install this close friend of his, or assistant, or whatever, up into the uh, prosecutor's chair like that. So that, yeah, well, good that that also comes back here. Hmm. B but how would he profit from all of this? He would be able to use the chief prosecutor as his puppet. Essentially... He would acquire unchecked authority over all investigations. By the way, I've said it a million times. I love that this is now Phoenix and Edgeworth both tag-teaming to defeat Gant here. That's what also makes this feel like the finale. Is like, 
finally these two rivals hand in hand, like freaking Dante and Virgil against that one guy in Devil May Cry 3, basically. It's 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 got the same vibes here, but more talky talk judicial than you know a character action game. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's so cool, and also again the perfect like summation for Edgeworth's character arc in this story that now he's willing to go after the true criminal, even though that's kind of not what he's supposed to be doing as prosecutor. But like, you know, when, when, when the truth is against him, he's willing to pursue that truth anyway. Anyway. Do you mean to tell me that despite the chief's formidable appearance, he plays with puppets? <laughs> oh my god, Judge. Oh, that sandbagging was fantastic, because that, that's pretty bad even for the judge to be that oblivious. I, I like it. I like I like that the game itself acknowledged that with that enormous little cricket moment right there. <laughs> no, wait. You must mean puppet as in someone forced to do his bidding. Never mind. Admit it, Chief. You assisted Lana Sky in forging evidence. Your motive? To appoint her as chief prosecutor so you could control her. Righto, my boy. You have quite an imagination. Let me ask you something. What? Do you have any proof of this? That I controlled Lana? For example, is Lana testifying that I've done such a thing? Lana. She's keeping quiet to protect Emma. There's no way she'd testify against Gant. Well, technically, Emma is no longer safe now that the truth has come out, so she could testify against Gant, I think. Right? Let's see what happens. I'm afraid without any proof, this all amounts to nothing more than mere conjecture. Hmm, unless... Oh, sorry. Oh, it, it... Misclicked a little there. Hope nothing happened on the screen. That was too bad. <laughs> Yikes. Getting too into this. Yikes. That is also what happened in this incident. This incident? Uh, which one would that be? Of course I'm talking about... The murder of Detective Bruce Goodman. The Chief Prosecutor has been acting strange throughout this entire trial. Almost as if someone has been controlling her. Damn, Edgeworth, thanks for with the assist there. Worthy. You'd better watch your tongue. I wouldn't want you to get hurt. Just what do you mean? What he means, Your Honor, is that Chief Gant is involved in the murder of Detective Goodman. Not only that, but the Chief is now making Lana take the rap to cover up his involvement. What? 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 Ooh, yeah, the big revelations here. Order! 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 I said order! Mr. Wright, you... you can't be serious. Huh? This... This is an affront to the highest ranking officer in our law enforcement agency. To accuse the chief of police of blackmail? And murder? That's... I <laughs> impossible! Your Honor, I was merely reiterating... What Mr. Edgeworth said in easier to understand language. Oof, not good, Phoenix, putting the blame on Edgeworth like that. That's that's a raw deal. Ooh, it looks like Edgeworth's fine with that ball game. It's too late, Mr. Wright. Hmm? Huh? There's no turning back for us now. It looks like he's the one who's decided to go through with this. Can you prove this, Mr. Wright? That the Chief, a high-ranking officer of the law, is involved in this murder? 
good question. Regardless of his rank or title, Chief Gant is just a man. The question is, is he a criminal? I believe the evidence will tell. I see. Ooh, I hope we get a chance to put some evidence down, because I know just the one for this one. Don't worry, guys, I got this. All right, then. Let's see what Mr. Wright's got. And it better be good. Show us this evidence that ties Chief Gant to the murder of Detective Goodman. Okay, guys, I think I'm pretty safe with this one. That's 777777, which we very much established is, you know, has to be when Goodman was actually murdered inside the evidence room. Right? Nothing else, really. Like, brought back to his office by Gant's request. Too conjectural, too much of coincidence. None of this stuff, really. Nothing in the uh, actual, you know, nothing really in the um, case. And also, this should satisfy, this has been already used in the case, so this should satisfy the requirements of the rule book. I think this one is the obvious one to go with, and we are going to do that. Come on. This is the ID card list. Yes, the one that shows who entered the evidence room on the day of the crime. There was one ID on the list we couldn't determine the owner of yesterday. 777777. Sorry, but there's no way you can prove that's my card number. Wow, Gant, like... Again, it seems like something you could just look up in this case. Like, you could get, um permission to look up his card number. Like, this is such a hollow, like, faint. It's your number. Mm. What? How do you know that? The safe in Chief Gant's office requires a code to open. Oh, I'm actually, here I'm glad that we don't have to at least input this. Like, this one is the obvious chain to tie it to him, so it's good that we get a freebie here. So, you know, a good balance of, like, Input from the player to, you know, check that they're on their toes and also just like, well, this one's pretty obvious, so we'll hand this one to you. Good, good, good. A seven-digit code. Seven digits. You don't mean... I'm afraid so, your honor. The code was 777-7777. The same as the remaining ID card number on that list. Chief Gant, you entered the evidence room on the day of the crime! Oh my god, the music kicks in and he's finally on tilt? Oh my god. This is fantastic. Although I'm a little terrified what he looks like when he's on tilt. The Chief, goodness. There might, this might actually become an action RPG in just a second. This might become freaking Dante and Virgil versus that one guy who doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. Order! Order! Chief Gant, what do you have to say? <laughs> Nothing. The defense's search of my office was in violation of regulations. And I will demand Mr. Wright be punished to the maximum extent of the law. But right now, this court demands an explanation from you about the use of this ID card. <laughs> Chief Gant! So you admit it? You entered the evidence room? On the day of the crime? What about it? I'm chief of police. Whether it's the evidence room or the bathroom, what's the difference? I can go anywhere I want. Tell me, when you entered the room, were you alone? I always go to the bathroom alone. As I do with the evidence room. Detective Goodman wouldn't have happened to be with you that day, would he? Uh, of course not! Why would he be? I hadn't seen him in days! You hadn't seen him... in days? Chief Gant, I'm afraid you've just undone yourself. On that day, 
you had to have met with Detective Goodman. What do you mean? This trial's purpose is to determine Lana Sky's guilt. No, it isn't, Your Honor. This trial's purpose is to determine the truth. Yeah, awesome. If Chief Gant met the victim on the day of the crime... Oh, look at him. He's now trying to play it cool by playing with his hair. <laughs> That's funny. Then we need to determine one thing. What transpired during that meeting? In that case, Mr. Wright, I'm going to have to ask you for evidence. Show us proof that the victim went to meet Chief Gant on the day of the crime. Ooh, shoot. This one I'm not sure of. So, we need to connect Goodman with Gant on the day of the crime. Good, I didn't press E to present. Let's see. No, nothing here, really. Nope. Nothing sticks out to me. Is it the trophy? Like he had to be at the trophy event? No, that seems pretty weak. 221 SL9. Ooh! This might be it. Maybe him like being about SL9 on the day. I'll think about it. I gotta play it carefully now, of course. This is this is go time here. No, no, no. Not really. No, no. That we use this already, that's not gonna... Oh, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. I've been tripped up by this once before, where I was like, there's no way we need to use the evidence twice in a row. Um, hmm. No. I don't really think... No... Can only be submitted to the chief of police. Okay. Date at 221. I was kind of thinking this. I was kind of thinking this, but I couldn't remember this item exactly. But this is it. Bruce Goodman, 221, has to be submitted to the chief of police. Which is you! Detective Goodman lost his ID card on the day of the crime. Or, to be more accurate, Jake Marshall stole it. So, Detective Goodman filled out a lost item report. He would have had to give that report to the Chief of Police. Yet you are in possession of the report. Which means you can't be sure if he filed it. Oh damn, by the way, I just realized I forgot about the two rules of detectiving again. But I think we did use this one time previously in the case. So this was, again, admissible evidence. I can't remember the the, um, the, um, situation, but I think we did use this for something. It was with Jake Marshall proving that Marshall had stolen the card, right? It was in that conjunction. I don't remember how exactly anymore, but it was there, yeah. So this is still all good. But, oh man, just a reminder to myself not to just go tossing the evidence willy-nilly. We dodged a bullet here, we got the right one. It was too obvious not to be, but, um... Yeah, gotta remember, got to remember to keep those evidence rules in mind!